Hello and welcome back to the Grapple Theory Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Now, today's very special guest is uh, someone we've wanted to get on the show for a long, long time. Delighted to finally get him on the show. We're going to be talking to him about his recent victory at TNT's Project X event. You probably know based on that who I'm talking about. We'll be talking to him about working for TNT, about how it all started uh, and the push they've given him there, um, as well as coming back to wrestling in terms of the last sort of 12 months and how that's been for him. We'll be talking to him uh, quite deeply about um, mental health in wrestling and, and how he's been affected by that. It's really, really honest and open and raw, um, and it, we really appreciate how honest he was with it. Um, so stick around for all of that. You're in for a real treat this week. Delighted to welcome to the podcast, Nico Angelo. Nico, thank you so much for coming on the podcast this week. Um, first of all, talk to me about the last 12 months in, in wrestling coming back. It's been about a, a year since wrestling returned. Uh, talk to me about how it's been for you, how you found that that last year. I say the first couple of months were a bit slow after mm. the pandemic like, like finished, basically, as soon as like we were all like let out type of thing. Yeah. Um, wrestling wise it was very difficult mm. uh, especially in this area everything shut down there was nothing left to um, so to try and get any type of training or trying to get back into just the momentum of it was, was quite difficult mm. uh, the promotions that were around you were gone um, there, was, there was nothing so it was a case of I remember starting from scratch mm. like not exactly but yeah, like 16, that feeling of fresh I think it was 16 start. promotions that I worked for in 2019. Mm. Uh, there was one left. Yeah, which is crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah, so it was it was wild. I had to just do a lot of showing face mm. and uh, just just popping back up and around. Yeah, yeah, sure. How is that in terms of? I guess, like you say, working for for that many promotions, all of a sudden there's like none of them left, and you've got to essentially find yourself new places to be noticed. Like, how how is that as a as a grind? I imagine. Um, I like to think that I had a good name for myself mm. before in 2019. So I'm like trying to go from literally one promotion still left to try and work into them was a bit difficult, but it was more, it made me fall in love with it again, mm. to be honest. It was, there was a, I think everybody came out of the pandemic, same type of way, like wrestlers and deciding either you had come out of it, you had come out of it one way, which is you put everything into it, or you come out of it with, you know, what, what do I do here? Yeah. Because the scene is completely different. Yeah, no, you sure. Um, and to be honest, it just made me love it more. I was just traveling all the time and just trying to get around and really busting my ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's really cool. It's really, it's really cool to hear you say that as well. Like you sort of like found that love for it again. Like that's really nice to hear. Um, and in terms of, I guess, getting out there more and things like that, that's got to be, again, quite nice as well in terms of finding love for it, because then you end up maybe a few places that you hadn't wrestled before and, and, you know, performing in front of new crowds, make new fans from that rather than sort of the shows you were consistently on and, and the fans who regularly knew you. Yeah, damn right. I, um, I was kind of in like a, a bubble cause you had a tack for wrestling, which mm. was although very popular. It was very much its own little bubble. Yeah. Um, so trying to break out from that was. Uh, quite difficult and then when I was getting the momentum and breaking out of it everything went to went to shit a bit mm. so it was uh, it has been good to break out and get new new fans and TNT you've done really well with that with me mm. they brought me up there more than they needed to and yeah, starting to make a name for myself up north as well. Then. Mm. Yeah, and you mentioned TNT. We'll get on to, to Project X in a sec. But um, in terms of just TNT as a, as a promotion, that must be really nice when a, a promotion like TNT, who I guess for a long time have been seen as like this underground promotion, but are now starting to also burst out of that in terms of becoming a mainstream British wrestling promotion, uh, are the ones that are like taking a chance on you and giving you that platform and, and booking you, like, like you say yourself, maybe like more than you thought they should have been anyway. Yeah, because um, they just took a risk. They really did take a risk with me because it was it was like uh, I'd done one thing with them, which is like a, a pre-show match with um, Kid Like Us 2 mm. um, before the pandemic, and then that was it. Um, so when everything started back up again, it was because of he's six hours drive away from us. Do we need to bring him in, or can yeah. we bring in another cruiser from just... 
around the corner, you know. So it was uh, it was a big risk for them, but I'm seeing it's paying off, which is good. I was going to say, like, it seems to have paid off, obviously, for for them and yourself in terms of the the way you've gone there. For for you personally, you know, like as a you know, in terms of like shoot, not as Nico Angelo, but like for yourself personally, has it been a risk that's that's paid off for you? Have you enjoyed your time there so far and, and enjoyed what they've they've had you do and what you're doing with them? Loved it. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, I've loved it. It's um, Jay's great. TNT itself is is great. Everybody, everybody in the locker room is just super friendly. Um, there's always food and everything you need backstage. You get treated really well. Um, the cars going up and down is always with people that I know, so it's it's all been really good. Like, yeah, it's great. Uh, no, yeah. that's good, and that's important. That's important because I think again. Um, you know, as, as well with the last, with everything that's happened the past couple of years in in British wrestling specifically, I think it's important, and we've had other people say it on the podcast as well that that promotions are treating wrestlers right and, and making sure you're you're looked after when you're there because you know, and, and no one names names, but like there are still a couple of promotions out there who maybe don't do that as well, and it's really nice to to hear that like promotions are for the most part seeming to make more of an effort to to treat their talent well. Would you say that that's something that you've you've noticed coming back? Hundred percent. Mm. There's far more promotions that I mean, the simple things like just having water backstage for everybody. Like mm. simple things like that is just now the norm. Like, mm. which is just great, even though it's just something that simple. Um, previously, there was very few that did it, to be honest. Um, but now, well, it's, it's, it's night and day difference. Night and day. Yeah. Which is good to hear, which is really good to hear. And that brings us on to Project X as well. I mean, talk to me, first of all, about the end of that evening, about about winning Project X, about essentially, you know, having TNT being like, you're, you're the person that, well, one of the people we want to like push here at the company, you know, to take us forward. Like, how is that for you in terms of getting that, that recognition and them having that faith in you? Well, initially, um... I kind of felt going back to TNT, you know, um, I put on around 20 kilos of weight um, from 2019 to now. Um, looked after myself better, presented myself better. And in 2019, the only person that really was like giving me that big, I don't know, like trust mm. was attack. And then when everything kind of went away, TNT then decided, you know, just give him a shot. Let's give him a little bit of, a little bit of something, a little bit of recognition. Mm. And um, I just felt like I should do whatever I physically can for them in the short amount of time that I do get in the ring with them. Mm. And and that's what I want to do. I want to. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to yeah. kill it every single time I get in there with them. And that's we're going to take this company. A little bit further, and let's see where it goes. And how did it feel then, like, just sort of holding, I, I, I wouldn't call it a trophy, like, holding the Project X title, like, you know, at the end of the night, after, you know, going through the tournament, first of all, having those matches, uh, but also, like, the crowd reaction at the end, I saw, was, was fantastic as well. Like, how did that feel, just standing in the ring at the end of the night? How did that feel? Um, <laughs> to be honest, I was just more grateful that now, Everybody's starting to get behind me there. Mm. You know, I've been a regular there for a little bit. I had a short time off and then coming back into it, I was kind of the underdog going into this. I don't think, like, a few, like, Doris is, I hate, hate to say it, but Doris is literally on fire right now. But um, Leon Slater is making waves as well. And Joe Lando is, I mean, he's out in America now. So, like, going into the final, knowing that, I think I was a bit more of the underdog in it. Mm. Um, just because of how popular they all are right now. Yeah. And just seeing everybody just, all right, we like this guy. We're, we're, we're behind him. This is his time. It was good. Nice, Oops. nice. And like you say, it's sort of like, again, I'm not going to compare them because they're two very different tournaments, but you have something like Project X and you have something like like the MPS in progress as well. That are two mm. tournaments that seem to be designed about really honing in on the, the up-and-coming British talent, the younger talent, who really starting to make a name for themselves and pushing forward. Um, and like you said, the, the names that are in the in the group with you, the Project X, you know, Lycos 2 as well, and, and Lando and Mayhew and Danny Black and Doris And like, I mean, how does it feel to be, again, not only 
competing against all of them, not only to be sort of seen as part of that that group, but also then for, for a company like TNT to be like, you're the one we're picking out of all this talent. Like I, hate, I hate to sound it, but I'm trying to be more positive of myself <laughs> these days. Hmm. And um, as far as I'm concerned, I belong. I, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned with this, I belong. And this is where I'm meant to be for now. And towards the end of the year, you're going to see a lot more of me. Let me, let me tell you that. Nice. And uh, I belong in this position in the scene right now. And it won't be long before I'm I'm taking over. Love it. Um, I love that. I love that positivity. That's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Some I like some wrestlers are really like um again, they always almost say that sort of stuff and they're like, Oh, I don't want to be like too up myself. But I love it. I love the positivity. That's what we want to hear, you know. I wanna I wanna be able to see you dominating throughout the rest yeah, of the I've year. I've been quite a negative person for a long time and it time for that's done. The nice. time for that is done. And love that it. was straight to where I want to go. Love it, love it. And all power to you as well with that. And in talking about Project X, obviously, first match you faced uh, Kid Lycos 2. Um, <clears throat> again, obviously another huge up-and-coming talent. Like, everyone raves about him all the time. And someone you know well from not only facing, like you said, a, a, a lot, but also from teaming with. Um, is it all, is it like, is, it, is he and I guess Lycos, you know, senior, if you will, as well, like, are they, are they people that you sort of like gel with quite organically and the chemistry's there quite organically? Um, so again, it really is, again, it comes back to attack originally, mm. which is, um, I seem to be going back there a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, everything you know? circles around, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, like us too, although people say he's like an up, up and coming talent this time, you know, in, in my opinion, he's not. Mm. Um, I can remember one of my first matches against him and it was, I think it was 2018 mm. and he'd already been doing it for I don't know, he'd been wrestling for like seven years already or something like that. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, I was going in with somebody who was, regardless of age, almost mm-hmm. a veteran of like the scene already. Yeah. Uh, in my in my opinion. Um so seeing it get to this point now and seeing how good he's been for so long, um, I'm I'm not surprised uh, how well he's doing. Yeah. And gelling with them both, back to attack with it. Like Goss was kind of somebody that helped me through with figuring out myself mm. in wrestling, to be honest. Um, and I owe him a lot for that. So when it was uh, coming to the time to join uh, Like Us Gym and be a part of the group as like a trios, it was a no brainer. Mm. And um, we went to a training session together because. Although I'd wrestled uh, like us too, I hadn't wrestled uh, like us. We went to like a training session together to see how it did, and everything flowed ridiculously. Mm. It was like we'd been training together for years. It was just perfect. Nice, brilliant. And that's always really cool when that happens as well. So take me back yeah. to to joining like us, Jim. Then how how did it all come about? How did the idea come about? And like, you know, I, I guess just that. Yeah, where where did it come from? Where were the roots of it? Um. So again, originally it was um at the time. Like us, uh, the original was um, doing more of a managerial role because mm. of his injuries at the time. Yeah, and uh, when he was decided to get back into wrestling, you know, he, he was like, "Right, I'm ready to go." And like us, two was born, and they went off with that plan. Mm. Um, and when we were at Attack, like us, original was somebody that did help me up and help me push through and help me figure out loads of different things. And when he saw that um, I had this new outlook on wrestling, this new um, physical appearance, this new new me. Hmm. Um, he had this idea of doing uh, the Island of Misfit Toys hmm. um, and basically a group of misfits from around the scene that don't really fit together formed into a, a little group and uh, from there we we're going to see where it goes. Nice. Um, we still need a <laughs> phone drop there, um, but we're going to see where that goes because um, we had a number of six mans that were supposed to happen up until now, but they didn't because of cancellations mm. of shows, which is happening sadly quite a lot at the moment. Yeah. Um, but there's a few coming up, so we'll see from there. Nice, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, a few things you you picked up on there that I want to mention. Um, let's go on to sort of like. 
I guess the the cancellation of shows because obviously like you know for the most part it's very little the fault of the actual shows themselves um and it must be I guess tough as someone again who like you know like us like a lot of people in wrestling have that that passion for British wrestling to sort of see I guess from especially you know coming through the point where British wrestling was at its boom 2018 2019 and I've been talking to a few people recently about this just just away from this in terms of do you think that the British wrestling is is back on the up again, or do you think it can sort of go through that that growth again, or do you think this is sort of a whole new era of British wrestling, and we need to sort of maybe put the the pressures of getting back to that level aside and sort of treat it as a whole new thing? So I think there's multiple things, really, in my opinion, that mm. has changed now compared to what it was. Um, it's got a long way to go mm. until it was anywhere near the level it was towards 2018, 2019. It really has got. I mean, 2017 as well, yeah. to be honest, there's, like, there's a long, long way to go. And anybody that thinks that it's anywhere near that point now is lying to themselves. Um, the scene's got a hell of a lot of talent. Mm. Um, so it's just a case of building everybody back up. And when it comes to the cancellation of shows, people are saying that like, you know, a lot of it isn't the fault of promoters because the price of everything is going up, mm. the price of living. Um but I do think a lot of people are trying to rely on an internet fan base mm. that possibly doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Um, I think if you look at certain promotions, uh, again, I'm not going to say any names when it comes to it, but if you look at certain promotions, certain more family types of crowds, uh, they're all selling very well. Mm. Um, they're dropping their ticket prices, they're flyering, they're doing everything as they need to do with promoters, and they're bringing in those crowds. Um, and, and there are people that want to go and see wrestling. The, the, the fans are there. Yeah. Um, so I think a little, little more work in that avenue needs to be done and to accept that maybe the big types of shows that we did have with the predominantly, let's just say, 18 to 30-year-old crowds mm. in the UK just might be going down for a bit. Mm. And that doesn't mean that the fans aren't there. It just means that crowds changed a bit. Yeah. Um. So I think that people need to accept that rather than trying to almost drown themselves when it comes to promoting mm. because the, the, the fans aren't there for that type of thing. The, half of the internet fan base that we did have in British wrestling has disappeared. Yeah. Or they aren't behind the wrestlers they want to be behind yet. Like the, a lot of us need to have a lot more growth and time mm. in the scene before we have that fan base that a lot of those wrestlers that were here did have. Yeah. So we just need to, just going to be a growth phase. No, for sure. Well said. Well said. But also in the case that um, I think we, we've mentioned this with a, with a lot of people, but also it seems that in terms of, although the, the pandemic has been really tough for, for everyone and like no one's going to deny that, in terms of purely coming back to British wrestling, it seems that, there was that little positive that came out of it in the sense that the people who all left, the people who went abroad or went to NXT or AEW or whatever, it left those open gaps that people like like yourself, like the young up-and-comers as well that we've mentioned, have been able to fill that those opportunities may not have been present to them if all this hadn't happened. Yeah. Which must um, be I like, think... yeah, I, I guess a small positive to take out of it. Amazing positive, amazing positive, because as a lot of my friends, all my cross friends mm. have now got, opportunities to push up into where they want to go to and previously it was very difficult mm. um the scene was very different and now it's a lot more freeing mm. there's a lot more opportunities for people who for example previously would have had to do a hell of a lot of hard grind to get to where they wanted to get now it's more free to try and get in it really is um but at the same time as well um I think a lot of people need to be more self-aware, mm. in my opinion. Um, a lot of people need to be self-aware when it comes to promotions they work for, what position they're in, and if they're moving themselves too early, mm. in my opinion. Sure. Um, yeah, don't rush there it. Are, yeah. There, aren't, there aren't many, um, but I really do think some people doing themselves a disjustice with going to higher promotions mm. because they have the ability to be very, very good. 
And if they just hone their craft for a little bit longer, I really do think that some proper good wrestlers will be born. Yeah, not trying to rush it to, to get to that high level too quickly. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, I hate to say it, but just enjoy enjoy the ride type yeah. of thing, man. Just enjoy the ride, bro. No, sure, sure. There's, there's, no, there's no rush in this. It's, it, it takes a long time, and there's very few people that get it done in three years or five years or get to the point where they want to get in that short period of time. Mm. It, enjoy it, man, because that's what I'm, I'm doing at the moment. I'm really just enjoying Every time I go out there, no matter what promotion it's in, just enjoying it. Yeah, and which is great. if I end up somewhere really good by the end of the year, then that's what happens. Mm. And just keep going. Yeah, that's great. And that's awesome to hear as well. And we've got a little feature here called um, What's in a Name? Uh, and it's sort of, as it says on the tin, it's very much uh, wanting to know the, the roots behind who Nico Angelo is as a, as a character. So talk to me about about um, yourself as as the character as Nico Angelo in the ring. Where where did that come from? And almost like with with your like Void Walker moniker as well. Where did that come from? What what does it take to be the Void Walker in in your mind? Uh, in my mind, when it comes to what it takes to be the Void Walker, I don't think there's anybody else in the scene that can do mentally what I do. Mm. And I say that fully with my chest. Um, there's nobody on this scene that could wrestle the way that I wrestle with schizophrenia. Hmm. And I'm 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 gonna say it. There's hundreds of people that can't cope day to day, sorry, thousands of people who can't cope day to day with schizophrenia, let alone getting in front of a mad crowd and wrestling the way that I wrestle. Yeah, you know, high flying, hard hitting style. There's, there's not many, and I don't think there's anybody on the scene that could do it. Mm. And I, I say that with my chest. Yeah. Um, the Void Walker name originally came from um, a song lyric. I actually can't remember what song it came from, which is funny enough. Um, but it was walking the void between uh, normality and sanity. Mm. And it kind of settled with me, and I kind of thought, yeah. Uh, so you void walk in the line between normality and sanity. Mm. So that's where it was born. And I kind of really took on this new hard hitting style of high flying because I feel like it's not done much. Mm. Um, it's it rarely done, to be honest. And oh, it just fits. It just really does fit with me. Yeah. No, sure, sure. And and you mentioned as well, sort of like the fact that, that you don't think anyone else could, could do what you do, especially with schizophrenia as well. I mean, like, in terms of yourself, like, personally, do you find it um, at any point, like, a, a challenge doing what you do, being able to, to go out and, and act as you do in the ring and, and have those matches and, and make it so, you know, physical and intense? Incredibly difficult. Mm. And, again, I'm quite an open person when it comes to, like, emotions in the style i think everybody should really speak more about especially men emotions mm. in general oh sure and shit half the time where i'm going out there if i'm having a funny day like a type of like schizophrenic kind of day like it's bloody terrifying mm. yeah. i've wrestled sometimes and again i'm i'm proud to i've got like if you see the tattoo there but yeah, i've got yeah. like schizophrenia, schizophrenia written on my arm so i'm very much open about it um i've been out in the ring where I've been hearing voices and seeing other people in the ring while I'm trying to wrestle. Mm. And you, you've got some people who go out there and they, they struggle just with that. So trying to, trying to do it is sometimes terrifying. Mm. It really is. Yeah. Like, and I mean, if it's something you're, you're open to talking about in terms of mm. back at like, say the beginning of your career going through that, um, how long did it take to, I guess, adjust to that? Not necessarily be okay with it. Because again, like you say, like people, with, with other mental health issues as well, you know, like no one's fully ever like okay with it. It's something you live with. It's something you deal with day to day. Um, yeah. But in terms of in the ring, how long did it take you to sort of be okay with that and make that sort of, I guess, um, distinction between what was and wasn't actually there, especially when you're in the ring, like you say? Oh, um, so when it comes to like my, uh, you're on about my hallucinations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so... With my hallucinations, over the years, I've become um, aware of what is real and isn't real. Um, there's not much differences between things, because the things I see are quite very vivid. Right. Um, but I'm quite aware, because it's sort of like telltale signs, or like, um, that shouldn't be there, so it can't be a thing. Um, 
that person is, for example, when it comes to like hallucinations of people, mm. sometimes they 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 very starey. So something will be staring at me for a certain amount of time, and it will make me go, "Okay, that's can't can't be a thing because right. some people don't stare like that." Yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes to being accepting of what it will, my condition was within wrestling, mm. um, it took me until this year. Really? To really, I, I feel like this year I've honestly had a big switch of um, mindset mm. when it comes to wrestling, uh, where I want to go, what I want to do. And I'd always had the fear of, oh, this company won't sign me because, um, you know, I've just got a bad name. Mm. You, you know, they're not going to want somebody on their roster with this and that and this and that. And I just kind of went, fuck it. Like, excuse my language, but uh, no, it's fine. Any language is fine on here. That's fine. We've had much worse. Happy days. I'm. Um, I used to be a sailor. I was in the navy, so um, I'm glad I can swear a little bit. Oh yeah, no, like we, yeah, we've had it all. We've To be honest, <laughs> but um, no, it was. Um, I, there was that worry mm. of not being able, and I honestly did. I just went, "Fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm done." I was like, "If people can't accept me for what I am." then how can I expect anybody to get behind me mm. if I can't accept myself? Yeah. So it was a bit, it was a big, it's time to move this forward and really embrace it. And I feel so much more comfortable now. Yeah, that's brilliant. And that's fantastic to hear. That's, that really is. And it's, it's great to hear you being so, so much more open and like positive with it, which is fab. Um, I mean, in terms of, I guess, well, I was going to say like moving forward, but not necessarily moving forward in terms of um, like what you sort of hope to achieve over the next sort of, you know, few months, few years, you, over the next sort of year or so, you know, you sort of gave little hints um, earlier about that. But like, talk to me about, I guess, if we're having this chat this time next year, I mean, you know, wh- where, where do you see yourself or where would you want to see yourself in terms of, again, in, on, the, on the scale of not just British wrestling, but like, say, just independent wrestling generally? Um. There's, three, there's a couple of companies that I do want to work for mm. um, across this year. I want to show up. Um, and that is OTT, mm. Progress, and 1PW. Nice, yeah. Um, those are the three I would like to branch out into. Mm. Um, and then when it comes to things that I want to be doing by next year, um, more regular on Red Bull because mm. um, I do love the roster when it comes to Red Bull. Like yeah. the roster is fantastic. It's, oh, yeah. uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, is the best roster in um in the UK at the moment. Oh, arguably, like, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Or just talent wise, it's it's ridiculous. Um, and then I also want to go to Japan. Mm. Nice. Um, that is the, that is a big one for me. I want to work for Dragon Gate, and this time next year, I, will, I that's my goal. If I can get, even if it's this time next year, and I'm possibly on my way there, mm. then that, that that will that would be amazing. But yeah. that's that's the goal. No, that'd be awesome. We'd love to see that. We'd love to see that. Um, and also going back to sort of what we were just talking about as well with with mental health, you you sort of picked up on it. But again, we we've spoken to a couple of people about this. I think Scotty Rourke was really vocal about it when when we spoke to him about it. But in terms of the fact that I think especially men need to be more, I guess, open with, with you know, talking about mental health issues and things like that. Um, mm. But also just in wrestling in general, do you feel like maybe there's been a, a culture shift as well? Because, again, like like a lot of things in British wrestling, it seems like it for, for a long time it was something that was a little taboo to talk about and that shouldn't be talked about, shouldn't be mentioned and just sort of dealt with personally. Do, do you think there's been that shift or do you, do you hope to see that shift happening? Since I've been involved in wrestling, mm. um, which honestly isn't that long, um, I've always had people to talk to when it comes to it. Um, I started out at Dragon Pro, mm. which is now New Wave Wrestling, by the way. Yeah. And it's run by uh, Brendan White. Just want to give that a plug because uh, that place is incredible. Mm. It's part of like a, an MMA gym as well, which has got absolutely everything. And that was also one thing I wanted to say about um, where I want to go mm. by next year. And that's... Um, Really helping Brendan to bring that school up to levels it, it could be at. It's coached by Brendan, uh, Wild Boar, Danny Jones, mm. and um, Mark Andrews as well. Yeah. And 
we're going to take that school somewhere. I'm yes. telling you. There's already people coming across from France. Um, Irish guys are coming over already for training. This is going to be the place to train. Awesome. So, awesome. Get that but, um, <laughs> uh, when it comes to mental health in wrestling, mm. sorry, a derail there. No, it's um, fine. I love, I love a good tangent. That's fine. <laughs> when, um, when I first came to Dragon Pro, um, I sat and spoke to Mark Andrews because mm. I was like, I've always tried to have one person who knows about my mental health issues sure. um, in whatever thing I've tried to pursue. Mm. So I've always got somebody, if I do need to talk to, I can talk to. Um, and he was a very approachable person. Um, he's an incredible human, to be honest. He's a great guy. Mm. Um, and he was very accepting. He was like, yeah, that's cool, man. And I asked him, like, do you know anybody in wrestling that possibly does have schizophrenia or you know, somebody that I could talk to? And he did have a look around and couldn't specifically find anybody, but he immediately went into, look, there's loads of people with mental health problems that yeah. are in wrestling. And it's rife, to be honest. It really is. Um, I don't know if it, like, attracts it or if it's just that common, which, mm. uh, to be honest, the second one, it probably just is I think that it could common. be a little of both, yeah. Yeah. And... Um, so for me, it's always been really open to talk about. And if ever I've seen anybody suffering from anything, I've always tried to reach out mm. or I've tried to speak to them when I see them at shows just to maybe get something off their chest, take them aside and just be like, look, it doesn't matter. I dropped a match or I'm a wrestler thing mm. for, for two seconds. Just doesn't matter, my dude. Mm. And go from there. So I feel like at the moment... Everybody's a lot more open to talk about it, which is fantastic. Mm. And there's a lot of people that are doing promotional things for it. Like you said, Scotty Rock is um, a big advocate for mental health, and myself doing um, advocate for schizophrenia and really mm. trying to get the destigmatization off of that. Um, and I really do think it is on the up when it comes to people just just talking about it, man. As shows like the past few shows, I've sat and spoke to people about it. Yeah. their mental health because they need to mm. half of them are so busy that they haven't got time to sit down so like when the match is done just grab them grab a drink and just chat for a bit that's yeah. it needs to be nice it needs to be. awesome yeah that's great to hear that's really great to hear going back to um in ring stuff as well uh, we talked about the origin of uh, of the void walker we talked about the origin of you sort of joining light costume talk to me about the origin of the spike where did that come from because that's the like, spike huh the murder spike. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. um, I mean, so, it's it's intimidating as hell when you walk out. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, how did it come about? I think everybody really likes um, accessories mm. when it comes to to wrestling. Like, I really think that certain things do have their place, and it's not something that I use um, unless I specifically will need to. Um, it's more of a for me, the murder spike then is kind of a a point for me where if somebody takes it too far, then I'm going to ha I have the ability to take it further. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not afraid to take it further. That mm. is just who I am. Like, even if you know me in personal life, I've had a lot of messed up experiences going through, which I won't go into. But mm. for me, grabbing something like that and using it in that sort of way is where it would go to sure. if somebody did want to piss me off and take me to that level. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it was more of an extension of myself. Mm. And was it always something you had in mind in terms of, I guess, like no, the so look it was, of it, it the, 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 the look, like how it, you know, how it looks when you walk out with it? Or did you have like a couple of things in mind? You were like, I could use this. I could use this. Um, no, it was, it was that. It was straight away. I, I saw what it was um, off of a, a, a television show. And it was, um, it's called a Gunstock War Club. Okay. And um, uh, Native Americans and things like that used to use them. They used to, when they didn't have any ammunition left, they'd mm. take the barrels off of rifles and add uh, spikes onto these, the back of a, of a, of a gunstock. Right. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, that, that's it. That, that's what, that, that's mine. Nice. Love it. Love it. Brilliant. Well, Nico, it's been great to have you on the show. We've got one final closing feature here. Uh, on the podcast it's called anatomy of a pro wrestler uh, and this is a shoot this isn't about nico in the ring this is this is about you this is about you personally uh, right. so i'm gonna put a few questions to you and you let me know what comes to mind 
Okay. It's right. It's nothing. It's nothing too strenuous. Don't worry. It's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing too deep. So like uh, sort of some type of thing, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is just like you know a little bit of like fun get to know you kind of questions. Uh, I see. So the first one is uh, my favorite pre-show meal. Um, probably a grenade bar and a monster. Nice, nice. Do you have a particular type of bar you go for, like in terms of like flavor or? Um, not particularly. No, just whatever's there. <laughs> Yeah, just wherever's that. Nice, nice. Well, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the uh, the next one is my favourite post pinfall pig out. Ooh. If there's sushi, it's sushi. Nice. Um, but you rarely will get sushi at what time so shows finish. So it has to be sadly McDonald's and it'll be whatever burger is the special burger of the month or right. whatever, and then I'll get like a one pound chicken burger, a um, garlic mayo wrap, millionaire's donut. Oh, you got um, all that? Oh, yeah. Um, and then I'll have mozzarella cheese sticks as nice. well, and then a, um, either a Coke or an Oasis. Love it. Nice, nice. Uh, well, the next one you might have already mentioned, because the next one is my favourite type of food just in general as a whole. Probably sushi. Yeah. Yeah, I think at the moment, anyway, it's sushi. Um, and then um, drinks wise, milk. Fair. It's not together though, right? You don't have that as a combo. I'll drink milk with anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah. Fair enough. That's fair enough. I don't get that a lot. If I'm honest, personally myself, drinking like straight milk makes me like cringe a bit. I'm like, oh no, I can't do it. Oh, I, I, I can't get enough of it, mate. No. It's ridiculous. <laughs> At the moment, I'm spending too much money on milk. It's, it's, it's not good. Like <laughs> Milk bill just through the roof. <laughs> yeah, it is, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Brilliant. Um, next one is um, away from food. The next one's uh, the song that gets me the most hyped. Oh, um... Someone that gets me the most hyped. Um, there's a remix of a um, a Viking song that was uh, used like in the in the show Vikings, right? And um, it's mixed with uh, an old like boxing theme song from like I think it's from like a video game. Um, and when I was powerlifting, that was my go-to song so i think i'd have to say that it Fair doesn't enough. like it's not a specific name it's just on like a youtube video and i just click on that youtube video i don't even know what it is called i'll try and find it i'll try and find it if yeah. i can find it i'll put it in this gap here i'll leave a little gap here and i'll put it in but, um, I'll send it over, man. <laughs> brilliant uh the next one is uh my favorite band of all time doesn't have to be a band <laughs> doesn't have to be a band it can be like a, a solo artist or something but like favorite music act of all time basically Favorite music act of all time. Um, currently, I'd say it's Bring Me the Horizon. I think. Nice. Yeah, love Bring Me. I think it's, I think it's Bring Me at the moment. Bring Me, I've had um, such an up and down relationship with because I, I loved them like um, throughout like their early stuff. Um, yeah. And then like was it Semper Paternal? I think like is when I sort of started. Or no, was the one after that? What is that? Uh, I can't remember the, album, the name of the album. It's the one with like uh, Drown and Happy Song and all that on it. Oh, Stab You, uh, True Friend. Yeah, yeah, friend, yeah. Uh, one, yeah. But then I went off them, the album after that because I thought that was really like electro and almost poppy and I was like, oh, I don't like they that. They did both quite poppy for that one album and it was, it was unusual to be honest. It but, was um, weird. It was weird. And then like the new yeah. stuff is good though. The EP was great. Oh, the, new, the, the, the stuff that came out with after the pandemic was incredible. Yeah, that was all good. So I'm back into them now, but I went off them for a long time because I was like, oh, no, that's not bring me. That's like... Yeah. <laughs> uh, next one is um, the best gig I've ever been to. So I've only ever been to one gig. Oh, okay. I know, right? Uh, especially with the way I, I kind of look. People are like, oh, you must have gone to gigs and done this and that and the other. But um, I, I don't like the, 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 the same. I've never really gone to watch many wrestling shows. I was watching from home or I'd... Um, kind of like to the back mm. like if i am gonna like if i am wrestling and i go out to watch the show i'll make sure i'm right in the back i don't like cram sure. people i get I, that I, I i don't do well in that situation i don't like too many people like touching me and bumping me i, yeah. I just don't like it no i get that um, i get that but the one that i did go to see was a day to remember nice they are a great live band and they were sick live man it, yeah. it shocked me i was just like oh it actually sounds like it does on there <laughs> 
on the team like so it was, it was great no, they, are, they are a great live band I've seen them live a couple of times and they they always bring it like they are always good but I get what you're saying about the crowds as well because I'm always like that I, like, I go to quite a few gigs but I'm always like okay I'll stand right at the side or right at the back by the bar yeah. So that no one's around, <laughs> and then I'll feel I'm, I'm, I'm secretly a bit of a boring shit, so I will. <laughs> if there is a chair to sit on to just sit and listen, oh, I'll do that. Happy days. Oh, to be fair, even bigger shows, I always go seated, not standing. I'm not, I'm not standing for that yeah. long. I'd rather just sit down. Oh yes, yeah, same, same. still here at the same. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, next one is uh, the movie that I chose the locker room. A movie that the movie I chose the locker room. Starship Troopers. No. <laughs> Absolutely banging your film, don't care. It's very, <laughs> it's very out there. Yeah. Nice, awesome. Uh, next one is uh, my favourite way to relax. Probably just laying on the sofa playing video games, honestly. Nice. Um, it used play? to be playing World of Warcraft. i just sit and jump on my PC, play World of Warcraft until the cows come home and then just chill like that, but... It kind of took away a chunk of my life, so I was just, I've, I've, I've moved away from that now. So now it's just sitting, chilling, watching a movie with the missus actually is a, is a good one for me. I like to just sit and watch an anime as well. Nice. And just disappearing. Nice. Love it. Love it. Uh, the next one's a bit of a throwback because it's my first job. My first job? Um, <laughs> um, it lasted two days. Right. Not the short, Not the shortest amount of time we've had. <laughs> oh, no, no, no we've had someone that's a day. I can't remember who it was, but definitely someone said a day. Um, yeah, it lasted two days, and it was working in a kitchen for a uh, like a, a pub kitchen. Okay, and it was just cleaning dishes. Right. What was the, what was and the reason for the I got lasting? two days in, and my hands were bleeding and raw, and I just went, "I'm not doing this for twenty quid." And I just did. I just done. No. Oh, how not aggressively good. were you washing the dishes? <laughs> um, well, they had me in there from. Five o'clock in the afternoon till twelve o'clock at night. Oof. Yeah, it's a long I was just one. washing dishes for that long, so my hands were just fell apart like so. Yeah, like, yeah oh, pruny as hell, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, not me. Not me. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the next one is uh, if I wasn't a wrestler, I'd be. Oh, I'm gonna get quite morbid here. Uh, dead. Wow, fair enough. That's fair enough. I, that, that makes sense. Like we've had a couple of people say, not not for this specific question, but we've we've spoken to a couple of people about that about how important wrestling is is in terms yeah, of just um, life as well. No, really. Like uh, that was that's a hundred percent truth. Um, I really struggled to to live with schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. I really did. Um, I tried so many avenues to try and live with it, and I even. Before I got to Dragon Pro, actually, mm. it was my last ditch at doing something. And me and my mother uh, were walking in town in uh, Neath. And there's a castle there, just Neath Castle. Mm. And and I can remember looking at her and I said, if this doesn't work, I'm sorry, Mum, but I'm done. Mm. And she looked at me and she'd been with me all the way through it. And she was just... She wasn't broken. She was just kind of like accepting. She was just mm. like, you know, it's, it's, it's like, okay. Yeah. And um, honestly, I got to Dragon Pro and everything just started to turn around. Mm. And I can honestly say now that even if I didn't have wrestling now, that wouldn't be the case mm. because it, it has changed my mentality and my lifestyle and my everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's brilliant and that's fantastic to hear and it's it's great to to know that especially as, as like a fan looking in to to you know to certain wrestlers as well like yourself and, and others we've spoken to how important it's been in in their life not just their wrestling life but in like their life as an overall and that's really lovely mm-hmm. to hear that's really nice and I'm, I'm really appreciative of you being so open about it as well yeah that, that's what everybody needs to be man mm-hmm. like everybody really needs to be more open about it sometimes it's a bit too too much too soon mm-hmm. when you like meet meet somebody new or whatever but Everybody's got to be open, man, because sure. that, that's what's going to help the most people. Sure, sure. Well, again, the next one, again, this is like the, the deepest it gets for us here, but like, um, you know, again, the next one sort of, again, if you're open to talking about it, is my greatest fear. Bears. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I fucking hate bears, mate. Really? Is there anything yeah. that like sort of brought that on or? Um, there was a, the only thing I can remember, honestly, is 
I was a kid and I was watching a, a film with uh, my family at the time and it was, I think it was called The Edge. Okay. And there's this huge bear attack scene in it where he just grabs some dude and just savages him. Right. And I was a kid and it scared the shit out of me. I was a proper little kid. Yeah. And since then, I don't like bears. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. That makes that makes complete bears. sense. Because, yeah, that's not the sort of thing a kid would expect to see in a movie. No, no, no. I was not expect that. I, I get that. Bad. I get that. Well, <laughs> in terms of... It's, it's weird you mentioned, you mentioned Bears of the Fear there. Because on the opposite end of the spectrum, the next one that we've just added, actually, because um, we spoke to Liam Slater. I spoke to Liam Slater a couple of days ago. That's going to go out in a couple of mm. weeks. Um, and he just out of the blue sort of mentioned his favorite animal. And I was like, why do I not have favorite animal in this list? So now it's in this list. So favorite animal. Uh, I'm going to be crazy with this one. And I'm going to say cats. Nice. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's, an, it's, it's a simple one to go for, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I'm the crazy cat man. Oh, I'm yeah. a cat dad myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah. No, you're going to get more though. Is it going to be go full on crazy cat man though? No, we're going to get one more just to so. She's got somebody to chill sure. out with when we're not around. That's fine. That's uh, not too crazy, then. That's fine. No, nah, we're only, only going to have the two. No, I think that's. I think that's a good amount of cats. I think, like yeah. with any pets, like two is good in it because then they got a pal, and that's fine. Yes, right. Ideal amount. Brilliant. Uh, the next one is a couple of wrestling ones. Um, this first one is a two-parter because it's my favorite wrestling match, and I want one that you've been in and one that you've watched. Okay, one that I've been in. Um. There's three that initially come to mind, so let's try and go through, pick one of them. Um, me against... Oh, which one meant more to me? That's difficult. That's really difficult. Um, I think just because it was the end of a storyline for me and it had such a good reaction... Uh, we even had um, a very sweet old lady come up to the ring at the end of the match and stick her hands through and try to grab me just to congratulate me. And I was just like, what the hell's going on here? She like, came up to the ring. She didn't give a damn. She just wanted to congratulate me. And uh, that was um, me against Chris Brooks at uh, the Dome in London for nice. Attack. Nice. Awesome. What were the other two you had in mind? Uh, the other one would have been against um, either Chuck Mambo. Mm. Uh, again at the dome. Nice. Um, Mark Andrews and Wild Boar, purely because they're my trainers, and it was a just a nice, like, full circle type of thing. It really yeah. was. Um, and then the other one is Mike Bailey. Nice. Beeble. Yeah, yeah. Just because yeah. I learned so much, and he didn't need to go so all out with somebody that he you know it was just a, it was just a match for him and for me it was something way way more and he really went all out and it, it, it was just great oh no Spiebel always delivers like we've had him we had him he was our first interview on the show and like the way he talks about wrestling you can tell like he's just going to give a great match to whoever he faces because he wants to he's, like, he's, a, di he's a different breed he, he's a different breed of human right? yeah. and he really is he is he's ridiculous he's ridiculous uh, lovely guy one... well. huh? really nice guy oh yeah really lovely nice guy. guy just so down to earth um, oh yeah sorry that was it moving on it's, it's your favourite match that you've watched Watched live or watched on television? Let's say overall, because the next one I've got is just a purely live one. So let's say overall, your favourite wrestling match. Okay. Um, probably there's two. There's Eddie Guerrero versus JBL. The nice. one where he gets bust open by the chair. Yeah, yeah, That one is just incredible just because of the way that Eddie plays off of the blood and plays off of everything. Just mm. unbelievable. And then the other one is Pac versus Sami Zayn NXT. Yes, that's a great match. That is I'm a great good. shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah two. two awesome ones. Two awesome ones. Uh, the next one that is live based uh, is the loudest pop I've ever heard. It was pop I ever heard. Mm. Oh god, um, that's difficult. I'm trying to remember. Um, I can imagine there's been a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, just trying to go through things, like. There's be, there was a few that were at a um, few shows where Pete Dunne just turned up randomly without anybody knowing. Um, there was um, the Riptide one where Pac just turned up out of the blue. That was just more of a like holy shit moment. That was thing. that was mine. Um, like, I was I was at that, and like I've never heard live a pop like it. Like yeah. that was mental. And then. Um, like us, 
return in. Mm. Um, that was for uh, I think it was I think it was for attack. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was that was incredible. Um, there's definitely been something else. I'm missing something big here. I know I am, and I'm going to regret it. But, <laughs> Yeah, that's all that's coming to my head. That's fair enough. That's, that's a lot of good pops. Yeah, the pack one for me was the one I always say if people ask me because I'm like, that was that was crazy. Like yeah. beforehand, everyone was like, oh, imagine if it was pack, and like, but no one truly believed it was pack. Yeah, and then for it to be pack was just ridiculous. Yeah, even when his music hit, people were like, nah, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, it can't be. Yeah. <laughs> it's a swerve. Brin, uh, the next one is um, my favorite venue to wrestle in. Uh, doming the dome in uh, London. Nice. Yeah, I thought you'd say um, that from what your favorite. I, match I, I don't know why, it's, but something about that venue just brings out the best in me. Mm. I, I I've had my best matches there, I think, and yeah, it just kept happening. Just good match after good match after good match, and I was just like, okay, this is my venue. Yeah. So nice, love it. Uh, a final couple. Um, the next one's my favorite place in the world. Um, it doesn't have to be super deep it can be literally as deep as you want we've had people say countries or cities uh, Scotty Scotty yeah. Rourke said his bed um, and that was like I think just I think just home for me yeah yeah wherever home may be um, I'm just that is my favorite place I'm quite an introvert mm. um, and yeah just home no I get that I get that that makes sense uh, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, again, the next one, the final one is uh, my dream holiday destination. Ooh. Um, I think it has to be Japan. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Like, even wrestling aside, it still has to be Japan. No, we get that a lot. And I'm always like, no, you can go over, you can wrestle and have the holiday. It's fine. Make it all uh, work. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, uh, the food, the everything, mm. just the... Uh, nice. Japan. Love it. Love it. Well, Nico Angelo, thank you so much for coming on the Grapple Theory podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure me. talking to you. I really appreciate how, how open and honest you've been with everything. And it's, it's really been a delight having you on. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you, man. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. We always end each show by giving our guests one final bit of promo time. So you mentioned before how you've got big plans for the rest of the year. So for the last few months of 2022 into 2023 and beyond, why are people going to want to come and check out Nico Angelo? Because they're really going to realize who Nico Angelo is in the next six months. They're really going to realize what the Void Walker means. They're going to realize that I've got a black heart of gold. And they're going to see me take over. Awesome. Brilliant. Perfect way to end. Mm-hmm.